All right, so last time we stopped in the middle of, a, of the proof of the first isomorphism theorem. So we had just proven the first part that we have a bijection between uh, the normal subgroups, no, a bijection between the subgroups of G which contain the normal subgroup N and the subgroups of G mod N. Okay, so now we, we want not, not only is, that, is there a one-to-one -one correspondence between the subgroups, but there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the normal subgroups. So, uh, next we're going to tackle the normality claim. Okay, so let's see here. We proved uh, before that if H mod N is normal in G mod N, then H is normal in G. And this is actually, this goes back to the thing that we said where we said if we have a normal subgroup of a group G2 and a homomorphism from G1 to G2, then the inverse image of that uh, normal subgroup under the homomorphism is normal in the, uh, the domain group of the homomorphism. And so the, we're able to say, say this now with these symbols because we prove that we have a bijection between um, the subgroups of G mod N or yeah the subgroups of G mod N and the so we, we prove that we can express every uh, every subgroup of G mod N as, in, as H mod N for some H in, for some subgroup H of G so no if, if we had just um, Previously, this would have been just H bar is normal in G mod N implies that, um, I don't know, like pi inverse of H bar is normal in G. But because we proved that pi actually gives us this bijection uh, between um, the subgroups of G containing N and the subgroups of G mod A, G mod N, then we can replace this H bar with just H mod N, and we can replace this pi inverse of H bar with just H. Okay, so we now know this, and that this is something that we could not have said un, until we proved the bijection that we did previously. Notice that now that I'm not pressed for time in this video, I'm going into a lot more depth and taking my time and rambling about stuff that probably doesn't take too much time to explain. But anyways, so that's one direction. Um, so if we have normality here, then we have normality here. And of course here, H is going to be a subgroup of G which contains N. Um, Right, because that's how we can write this. So anyways, if um, H is a normal subgroup of G, then we want to prove that H mod N is normal in G mod N. Uh, and of course here, H is uh, a subgroup which contains N. So then... Uh, we just do, what do we want normality to say? For all G and G, and for all H and H, we have um, G, H, G inverse is in H, because that's what normality means. Ooh, no, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. What's that? That's like that future on Anyways, um... G inverse G is an H. So, uh, 
GHG inverse N is in H mod N. Um, so now how does multiplication work in G mod N? We, we can write this out as uh, GN times HN times, now we can bring the inverse out here because modding out by n is a group homomorphism. So the inverse here and then modding out is the same as modding out and then doing the inverse here. Um, but anyways, this is just the same thing literally as this, and so this is in h mod n. Um, and thus, that's precisely what it means to say that h mod n is normal in g mod n. Okay? Okay, so, that, so that's the normality statement. So that wasn't too bad. Um, finally, we want to prove that g mod h is isomorphic to g mod n mod h mod n in this scenario. I.e., when I say in this scenario, I mean in the scenario where h is a normal subgroup of g which contains n. And that's necessary because otherwise this g mod h here, that's not even a group. So anyways, um, consider the short exact sequences as follows. So we're going to have 1 goes to h, goes to g, goes to g mod h, goes to 1. Then we have 1 goes to h mod n, goes to g mod n. It's going to go to g mod n mod h mod n, and this is going to go to 1. Okay, so now we have a projection here, pi. We also have a projection here, pi. And we'll call, this is also a projection, we'll just call it pi prime. And then we're going to define this map here, psi. Okay, and because h is normal in g, and because h mod n is normal in g, because h is normal in g, we know that h mod n is normal in g mod n. And so from what we proved last time when we discussed short exact sequences, we know that, well, these are short exact sequences. By you go here, and then here, and then here, and then these are all just the things that you would expect them to be. This is inclusion, this is inclusion, this is projection, projection, projection. This is also projection, but we don't need, we're not going to use it, so we don't need to name it. And then, of course, we have exactness at every single, at all six of these things. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're going to use this psi. Um, because we have a map, this psi will give us a map from g to g mod n mod h mod n. I, I hope it's clear here, by the way, that this is g mod n is in the numerator and h mod n is in the denominator here. So it's g mod n mod h mod n. Um, so keep that in mind. But anyways, so we have this homomorphism here. And remember from the fundamental, uh, from the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms, which actually is itself sometimes considered an isomorphism theorem, um, we have, if we mod out, if we take G and mod out by the kernel of this map, then that will be surjective onto the image. And in particular, if this map psi is surjective, then G mod its kernel is isomorphic to this set. And so if we want, if we're trying to prove this, then what we want to prove is that the kernel of psi is H. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to let psi from, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you where it's from because that's just, I don't want to have to write g mod n mod h mod n more times than I have to. So let psi b 
be pi prime composed with pi. Um, psi is a surjective homomorphism since pi and pi prime are. I don't think we proved that in this lecture series that the composition of two group homomorphisms is a group homomorphisms, but you can prove that and you should prove that if you haven't proven that. It's a very important fact and it's not very difficult to prove in the sense that you sort of do the first thing that would come to your head and it should work out. Um, so composition of, compositions of group homomorphisms are group homomorphisms and so psi is a group homomorphisms then projections are going to be surjective um, because obviously anything of the form g mod n is going to come from taking something in g and modding out by n and so these projections are always going to be surjective uh, what else okay so it's so so we have that this is a group homomorph bah, group homomorphism and we have that surjective the only thing now is that we need to prove that its kernel is h okay so g is in the kernel of psi if and only if um, what does this mean? It means psi of g is equal to e and of course e this is going to be the identity in g because no it's not e here is going to be the identity in g mod n mod h mod n now typically you write a, a good a, a, a nice way of writing the identity element of a group is to just use the group as a sub uh, as a sub index um, subscript but I don't want to write this whole thing again let alone as a subscript here so I'm just going to call this e prime okay so psi of g is equal to e prime and so what does that mean so if and only if okay so that means pi prime of pi of g equals e prime okay so pi prime will map pi of g to the identity but that means precisely that pi of g is in the kernel of pi prime but what is what is the kernel of pi prime remember this is a short exact sequence so we have exactness here so the kernel of pi prime is equal to the image of h mod n and remember these two maps are the inclusion maps and so the image of h mod n under this inclusion map is just h mod n and so pi of g is in the kernel of pi prime which is equal to h mod n and that's if and only if so if pi of g is in h mod n well look um, so then that means that g is going to be contained in we can just take this as pi inverse of h mod n right because if pi will map g to h mod n then if we consider all the things that map into h mod n then obviously g will be in there uh, but what is pi inverse of h mod n well we're modding out by n here so what will what will uh, what will map onto h mod n is just h okay so g is in the kernel of psi if and only if g is in h so thus not yeah thus kernel of psi equals h uh, the desired result 
follows is from uh, Fatag, the fundamental theorem of group homomorphisms. And so that's it. We've proven the first isomorphism theorem. And yeah, after this, we'll go ahead and we'll prove some more isomorphism theorems.